Let's try an example to determine the size of the plate girdle. This diagram shows a half section of a plate girdle. The span is equal to 25 meter. It is made of steel grade of 355. Assume that the section is class 1 and the conditions of the support is a non-rigid end post. It is subjected to an uniform distributed load of GK 15 kN per meter and QK 20 kN per meter. There are a series of stiffeners along the span. The stiffeners are spaced at the equal distance of 1.75 meter. Take the K equals to 0.4 for plastic moment resistance. The question asks us to analyze the load and also propose a suitable size of the plate girdle which composed of the web, flange and the stiffeners. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, first we need to determine the shear force and the bending moment diagram. Since that we're going to need every single one of those in the following steps, so we will calculate this shear force and the bending moments along the way. The design loop is calculated based on the ratio of 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. It will be equals to 50.3. The maximum moment is determined by the equation WL squared per 8 for a simply supported girder beam. The maximum moment is obtained nearly 4000 kN meter. As for the design shear loads, it is considered as half of the total force acting on the member. Therefore, the design shear force is 628.75 kN. Sketch the shear force diagram and determine the shear load and the moment load along the span at every position of the stiffness. The respective shear loop and the moment loops are given here. The largest moment loops it will be here and the largest shear loops it will be positions here. Next we need to estimate the cross section size of the plaque girdle. First we do with the web. The K is given as plastic moment resistance 0.4. The steel grade is 355. First, use the equations for the flank induced buckling. At the current stage, we do not know the dimensions of the member. Therefore, we do not know the area of the web and the flank. Based on the principles of the first method, the equations that we are using normally will end up about equivalent area of the web and the flank. Therefore, we just start with simply assuming the ratio of the web and the uh, flank should be equal to 1.0. In this case, we need to assume a size of the web in terms of the thickness. Assume that the thickness of the web is 8 mm. The ratio of the HW per TW is computed by the equations is given here. This represents the ratio lambda. Substitute the lambda into the, these equations, you will be able to obtain a HW which is equal to 1378. The moment here refers to the largest moment along the span. FYD refers to the U strength of the flank.
there is a simple guide for us to determine an appropriate height of the web. A typical plate girdle will have the ratio of the length divided by height of the web, ranging between 8 to 10 times. By converting the L, multiplying with the ratio, you will get the height of the web in between of 2.5 meter to 3 point something meter. However, this guide is actually meant for references. In this case, the computed HW based on these two equations is somewhere between 1.3 meter. We round the number and we provide HW equals to 1.5 meter. In reference to the guide here, it doesn't comply but it doesn't really matter as this is the stage of the estimating. Eventually, you're going to check the size with different aspects of the requirement to determine whether the member is going to pass or fail. Assuming that the height of the web is now determined in 1.5 meter, and we're going to check if the minimum thickness based on the lambda ratio is whether it is less than the assumed number of 8 mm. It is found that the TW based on the lambda here is equal to 5.8 and it is less than the assumed 8 mm. Therefore, you can simply use the thickness of the web equals to 8 mm and the height of the web equals to 1.5 meter. Next, we proceed with estimating the size of the flank. Normally, we would like the sections to be in class 1. And the flank is subjected to a uniform distributed load. That means the top flank are subjected to compressions. So the limit for the class 1, it will be 9 epsilon. First, you need to determine the epsilon. It is obtained by dividing 235 with the strength of the steel, which is 355, and square root. The epsilon is 0 0.8136. Then the limiting ratio of C per T, it will be 7 point something. That means the C here, the C here is about 7 point something times the thickness of the flame. On this basis, we try to work out the relevant area of the flame. The area of the flame is assumed to be the thickness of the flame multiplied the width of the flame. In this case, the thickness of the web is in all then the width of the flank it will be 2c. So by multiplying this with the thickness of the flank, we know that the area of the flank it will be in the functions of the thickness, which is 14.6 times of the thickness square. On basis of the moment resistance, where the area times the Fy times the lever arm, divided by a factor of safety. This is a typical equation for the moment resistance of the plaque girdle. Reorganize the equations, you will be able to obtain your area. At this stage, we know the moment load, we know the Fy, and we have already decided the height of the web. So in this case, we should be able to generate the area of the flank. In this case, the area of the flank it will be 7379 mm square. Substitute back this value into these equations, then you obtain the thickness of the flank to be at least 22 point something. Use a round number, maybe we use 25 mm as a flank. Then go back and look into the areas required. So, the BF is found to be 328.7 mm. 
Again, we choose the bigger sections, 350. By this stage, we have decided the thickness of the flank equals to 25 and the width of the flank is 350. Next, we check for the stiffener size. As the spacing between the stiffeners is going to be the same throughout, that means the ratio of A per HW it will be the same throughout the beam. This represents the first stiffener, second, third, fourth, and so on. And check this ratio against the square root 2. It is found to be less than square root 2. That means the required second moment of initial will be determined by this equation. Substitute the relevant value into the equation you obtain this. The BS, that means the B stiffener, is obtained from the typical second moment of initial equation, which is this one. After reorganize it, you will obtain these equations. Based on the equations, you will obtain the B equals to 108. You are to provide a bigger sections. Normally, we use the thickness of the stiffeners to be equals to the thickness of the web. And with that, we can choose any value which is bigger than the B calculator here. When we decide the width of this, we need to check the C. That means this C. The stiffener should be within the C of the flank. If the stiffener is greater than this, Technically, the only effective part it will be within the C. That means the extra part that which you provided to the member is not really useful. Therefore, we will check with the C. The, this number should be less than the C. Finally, as a conclusion of the estimations, the web height it will be 1.5 meter. The web thickness is considered as 8 mm. The flank width is 350 and the thickness is 25. As for the stiffener, 8 mm thickness and the B here referring to 160.